everyone, Buddha Bloody Eyes here, and I am on the Crushbone server. I am standing in an Everfrost summer home titled CS Prexis. It is part of the Narathian Punkocalypse Challenge. The owner is Awana, and the designer is Anduin. Um, let me see. Ooh, what side of the game is this on? <laughs> Frost Summer Home, and it is on the Freeport side of the game. That's what it is. It's on the Freeport side of the game, which I think I put that incorrectly here. So let me just change that. Freeport, there we go. Okay. Now I had to check my information in my in my information box because in the last video was called the factory and that was actually owned and designed by Rainy and I had typed Anduin and Awana in the information window. <laughs> I got like a house ahead of myself. So now I'm paranoid. So I had to double check. <laughs> I'm going to blame like over excitement from my contest coming to a close and you know, I'm that's just what I'm going to blame cuz that sounds good, right? Okay, so anyways, if you would like to s pop in and give this house a couple of likes, it is, if you sort by newly published, it's currently listed under Large Homes number two, and which also reminds me, I better give this one a couple likes. Okay, now Anduin, she's the one, she has a house under Nabuda's favorites on my journal. Um, it's called the Captain's Quarters, and if you want to see that home that she did, which is amazing, by the way, it's just a s small, like, two-room home. She did an amazing thing with it. It's listed on my journal under, you can look under Anduin, or you can look under the Seafaring category, uh, or even the New Buddha's Favorites category. Okay, so anyway, so I'm really excited to see what she's done here. Okay, so we've got, ooh, look at that. You could go out, but the ladder's been broken off, so we can't get up there. <laughs> okay. A vault door. Or, not a vault door, but a, um, what do you call these? Like a hatch or whatever? Okay, let's see. Emergency evacuation plan. Type slash house and select leave house. <laughs> Nice. Hey, that does kind of look like uh, that tile right there does kind of look like a, a map, doesn't it? it? It really does. Okay, so we've got um, a house actor here named... And of course I've got to sit to see her face. Whoops. I want to move that. I want to move this to see her face. Guardian Althea Frostborn. You cannot leave through there. The ladder is broken now, thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I broke the ladder on my way in. That's awesome. Okay. Oh, look, a little vine going up the side. That's pretty cool. What is that? Oh, man. Why can't I click you? Is this like a hanging vine of some kind that she's put upside down? It won't let me click it. It doesn't like me. Okay, so let's move along. You land hard on the ground as the ladder breaks. Ah, oh, I get it. I fell through the hole. That's awesome. I totally love that. That's that's great. This is great. Look, it's it's cockeyed. Do you see this? It's cockeyed. Way cool. Okay, so, so we got little dudes here. Here's a little gnomey dude. Does he see anything? Sergeant at Arms, Frey Freyrick, Strong. A oh wait, like Tinkerer. Butik Cogwizzle says, This will be my greatest gadgetized transportational corrupt contraption yet. A few more tweaks and this should increase the scout's carrying capacity by threefold. And the sergeant at arms, um, Freyrick Strongax says, Hmm, how do you expect to get, out, to get it out? It won't fit through the entry hatch. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. He's got all of his tools set up right here. Did she build that? Is that... Or is that like a thing? Nope, it is a thing. Cool. That's awesome. I don't know where that comes from, but it's cool. Oh, it's sprung a leak. Look at that. Sprung a leak. So is it sinking? Probably the apocalypse messed it up, right?
it got wrecked up. <gasps> oh, wait. Or maybe it didn't just now sink. Maybe this is like wreckage and they're like living in the wreckage because it's safer. You know? Oh, look, a troll! Witch Doctor Gilta Gorfis says, a few more items till the cure-it-all batch be done. Just a pinch of extract of fairy dust, a sprinkle of ground Ixar scales, and a few drops of dragon tears. <laughs> nice. Love. Oh, that's cute. This is nice. It's got a lot of personality, too. I totally dig it. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool, right? Oh, she built that, too. Nice. She did build that. That's a conglomeration of pipes. And, um, cogs. A sign. Ooh! Experimental personal beaming device. Enter at your own risk. We take no responsibility for lost limbs. <laughs> nice. Is this actually a teleport pet? It is. Nice. Okay. Well, we're going to keep going here. We want to... Some kind of little monitoring de panels. Okay. And then let's see. Engineer Ulana let's see, Ludimentium says, This is a miss. These ends are completely shot. Hmm. If we could acquire some bits of tungsten, we could calibrate the fortitude of the compression springs. Nice. Look at that engine. That is a custom build, isn't it? She custom built that thing. Very, very nice. She's got a divider there with the little tile on top. I forgot what these tiles are called, but they are cool. Thurgoden metal tile. I think these are the ones that come out of Thurgoden. Very cool. And they're like some expensive price, like a platypies or something. I can't remember now. It's been a long time. This is very cool. Oh, look. Vines growing all up the side here. This is cool. It's so cool. I mean, this is a nice build. So, mess hall. We'll check out the mess hall. Love the transporters. Love. Oh, this is so good. See? Here's another seafaring type of home. I think she's got a thing for, for boats and you know, the ocean or something. <laughs> Don't you think? Nice. Look at this bucket over here. What is this thing? Pygmy bucket. Man, that's a cool bucket. Man, she did a nice job on this. I am completely and totally and 100% impressed. So great. So this is like the dining room. Okay, so we've got some people over here. So this little halfling girl is Baker Cor... Okay, let's see. Cornelia Rumblebelly says, Girls, I'm afraid we do not find... S if we do not find some food soon, we will have to cut rations even more. We are already living off of completely unhealthy proportions. And then Procure... Sinithia Tavalis says, We are going to have to do something. We are already on half rations and still running out. If we do manage to find someone with supplies, we can just make sure they don't need them anymore. <laughs> ah, okay, and then this girl. Pro procure Iziria Tavalis. Nathaniel mentioned something about a settlement about a day from us. Maybe we can acquire their supplies. It wouldn't be the first settlement we have relieved of their goods. <gasps> well, that's what happens in a post-apocalyptic world. Oh, look, there's a little walkway up there with hatches. Cool. I love the hatches. Man, this is an awesome house. Okay, let's see. What is this? Is this an actual, like, hatch? Or did she... Oh, she built it. She did indeed build it. So, a garubi. Okay, so, crew bunks and storage bay. A 
another hatch. Oh my gosh, that's cool. My goodness. Man, this is a good design. So awesome. Oh, here's a guy here. Rover Nathaniel Winther says, Turn around and walk away. If you continue to intrude my privacy, you will see the same mercy I showed the Rokaluk that killed my family. Uh-oh. Well, he is not a happy dude. Nice! This is a cool room. Right? Maybe this is where the two sisters bunk up. They bunk up together right there. I love how this whole place is tilted. Man, she did a fantastic job. I just love it. So how do you how do you suppose she tilted it? Do you think she like built the whole place and then like saved with, packed it all in the moving crate, saved without, and then tilted it all? Probably not. That would probably not work out so great. But I don't know. I wouldn't know because everything is... I think she does use the layout editor. I'm not... Couldn't swear to it though. Alright, so Commander Awana Cookie. Oh my gosh, Awana Cookie! <laughs> I get it. Oh my gosh, adorable. Okay, so Awana Cookie says, Mm-hmm, this old captain seems like a nice guy. Yes, he's glad I found his logbooks and his ship. That's awesome. Okay, CS Prexis. Log volume 8. Are there other volumes on the desk? It looks like there are. Uh, so this is Awana's log. Let's let's read let's read Awana's log here. Oh my goodness, this is super long. <laughs> oh lordy. Okay. So I'm debating whether I want to read all this in the video. I mean, I do, but a lot of reading. Captain Prexis. Maybe we can see what happens to poor Captain Prexis. So what happens to them? I almost never... Okay. Let's... let's volume 8, Volume 9. Okay, let's look at Volume 8 here. Whoa. That's a lot of reading. A no date for the video, I mean. All right, let's find out what happened to the to the Prexis here. Okay. <clears throat> so they're talking about the cataclysm in these entries. Some people are wounded. The ship is requiring near constant repair to stay afloat and they're short of supplies. They don't think they'll survive at sea. The seas have calmed and the skies remain darkened by ash and we remain hopelessly lost. Our supplies continue to dwindle and the desperate patches on the ship ship's leaks are slowly failing. Our options grow thin. Abbott was the first to spot the unidentified coast when we surfaced and we've since drawn closer. It is unfamiliar to us with no identifiable landmarks from this distance and with no clues as to the scope of the damage done by uh, Luckland's Fall. Oh nice, Luckland's Fall. Okay. Still it is buoyed still it has buoyed hope among crew that others have survived this cataclysm. Any any a faint hope is better than none. Okay. After looking at our options, I've decided we've no choice but to breach the Prexus. The leaks are too numerous and would require a month to dry do and dry dock to fix properly. We have no other options. We must risk that land and hope that we can survive there, for we have no chance of surviving here. The Prexus is a land, and I feel no right to call myself a captain anymore. We've begun to bury our dead. It is a slow process, but a necessary one. And we have taken stock of our supplies. Abbott found Freshwater Inland, and Brenworth began begun building a makeshift camp for us nearby. I've captained the Prexus for seven years, but it will never venture to sea again. My duty to keep this record has ended, and I feel no re release from writing these words. Ink is a precious rare thing now, and even this feels a waste. If one day someone reads this, know that I will that I 
am glad we are not the last, and that I will never feel stronger pride than I felt for my crew. Well, I guess they made it to, to uh, to land, didn't he? Didn't I? Didn't they? So, okay, if you guys come visit this, make sure you come read the logs here, because it's telling the story about how this all happened and everything. Oh man, yeah, this, this thing got... A lot of people died. It's pretty bad here. Okay, so when the video ends, I'm going to read through this whole thing. But uh, you guys make sure that you come and read this, okay? Okay, now Awana's log. I'm going to look through Awana's log here. Found day 15th of wet damp, first year of Awana. <laughs> nice. Lux. What's tail tingling Lux? We were out here for weeks in the rains and the wets and the rains and the muds and the rains looking for a new base of operations. And, and all we find is stupid wet caves filled with giant disgusting bugs and some particularly unwelcoming lizardses. Then Synthia comes running up and tells me she's found something out at one of the remote beaches. What they were doing there in the first place when these were clearly told to be out looking for peoples to greet. Me's do not knows, but I'll let it slide this once. Once. This place is huge and it's and in quite the remarkable condition seeing how long it's been here. The moldy old books me's found in one of the bunks says it was around since the moon blew up and it seems to have been completely forgotten since then. So much sands has had built up around it. Me thinks most of it is undergrounds and underwaters again. Freyrick says the sands build up around it is the only reason it's not flooded. Some things about the cracks getting plugged up. Anyways, Freyrick says he can patch up the worst of it quickly enough and make it safe for us to live in. Mies feels kind of sad for the peoples who used to own this ship. The books paints a less than cheery picture, but oh wells, they, they're all dead now anyways. One captain's loss and another's gain and all that's. Once we can move into this place, we'll have easy access to nearby roads to continue our greetings, and can easily go scavenging from here too. And since this place has has remained empty for so long, we might be the only ones who even knows it's here. It's perfect. Scrub day, 16th of wet damp, first year of Awana. <laughs> I'm sure Awana. The boys are still resistant to goings along with my clearly superior Awanian calendar. They actually asked it, uh, asked it why it was necessary we have our own calendar. Really? Really? They'll get used to it, or else. Bling day, 17th of wet damp, first year of Awana. <laughs> Olana actually got the engines of this old place up and running again. She said it was actually very simple because uh, the theories of therm... Okay. Wow. Thermodysum thing or, or what's nots are actually much better and understood now and it should be no problems to keep it running from now's on. Of course, turning on the engines also turns it, turned it, turns on some sort of water pumps things which promptly start leaking in the big room. But as my mother used to say, you can't get the cheese without getting brutally murdered by the spring. <laughs> At least I think that's what she said. Count day 18th of wet damp, first year of Awana. Now's the magical portals things are working again. The fat ones can actually get around the ship. Mies don't knows why the little crawl spaces weren't enough. They seemed perfectly spacious to me, but Gothunk absolutely insisted these would not fit ogres. <clears throat> Found day 22nd of wet damp, first year of Awana. Everyone's moved in now. The big room is still a bit wet, but we don't use it for much at the moment anyway, so me suppose we'll just let that slide. Cornelia is giddy to have an actual kitchens to cook in, and having food cooked over something other than a campfire is certainly nice. Mies hears there will be pies. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's awesome. That's just so great. Love it. Love. Look, the book is propped up. The bed is propped up by some books over here. <laughs> so funny. This is nice. Man, she did a good job on this.
Nice. This house is fantastic. I love it. Okay, I think I saw everything. Pretty sure I saw everything. Where's the teleporter thingamajig? Uh, experimental personal. Okay. Do not attempt to exit the device while in transit. So, storage bay, I think that's... Whoops, I just went to the mess hall. I didn't mean to go to the mess hall. We've been in the mess hall. Let's try the storage bay. I think this is where... Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, wait a minute. I didn't go up here, did I? Let's go up here. We gotta see what's up here. I do my little turn on the catwalk. On the catwalk, on the catwalk, yeah, I shake my little touche on the catwalk. Okay, sorry. I'm recovered. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I'm on a catwalk, right? Okay, I'm probably giving away my age by singing that song, too. Oh, look! The all-important door to the guild hall! Very clever placement of it, too. That's awesome. Okay, I think I saw everything. There weren't any other catwalks, were there? Gosh, I hope I didn't miss any. I'm just gonna double check the mess hall and make sure I didn't miss any catwalks anywhere. Okay, that one you can't get up to. It was just there for looks. Okay, so yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw this whole thing. And with that, I'm gonna call it the end of the video, and I will see you guys in the next one.